Cloud architects are the people that are in charge of translating business needs into cloud solution blueprints while implementing best practices when it comes to cloud computing and also respecting the needs and requirements and limitations that customers have. And on top of that, offering recommendations that customers might not even think about, right? Uh, so this is why whenever someone asks me, hey, Gwen, I'm a complete beginner to cloud and I'm looking to land a cloud architect role, I tend to tell them that architect roles typically require years of experience and aren't really beginner friendly. I'm not here to discourage you. If you feel like you meet the requirements, by all means, go ahead and apply. I just feel like beginners get confused because of two reasons. One, cloud roles are extremely vague and not very well defined. And, and two, I think one of the most popular certifications out there for cloud beginners is the AWS Solution Architect Associate. And once they pass the, the certification, they think like, oh, I have to go get a role that has that architect name in it, right? Um, but anyway, in this video, I'm gonna explain what an architect does and some resources that you can use to improve your architecting skills. With all that being said, hi, I'm GPS and welcome to a new video. All right, so in the intro, I gave you a definition of what a cloud architect is. Uh, so let me give you an example now. So let's pretend that I am the cloud architect on my team. My manager comes along and she tells me, hey, Gwen, we've been told that there are two team members on a different team that currently spend about two to three hours downloading some files that are generated from a product that we own and then submitting those files to an external website. And we've been tasked with automating this. Can you please come up with a solution on how to implement this? Right, so right, right now, what I want you to do is pause this video and kind of think about what would be your next step, right? And while you're at it, make sure to like and subscribe and share this video with someone who is interested in cloud computing. Okay. So anyway, let's get back on track here. Um, if your first thought is like, oh, I could probably code something. I could probably container, CI, CD, pipelines, all these kinds of things. And, you know, slow your roll, right? Um, because let's think about what we know here. We know that files are generated from a product that we have. So we know where the files come from. And then we have two team members that are grabbing those files and manually uh, submitting them to an external website, right? So we know where the files come from. So we know point A and then we know point B where they need to end, but we don't know anything about the middle ground there, right? And that's our task as a cloud architect is to have these conversations, ask the right questions and to pair project requirements with cloud services that are out there, right? So for example, there are, I think 10 container services that you can use to deploy containers on Azure. And that's just Azure alone. How do you know which one is the right one for your solution? Half of that is understanding all the, the possible services that are out there and you know, understanding the pros and cons, use cases and all those kinds of things. And part of those, and the other half is, is understanding the requirements of your project, right? So for example, let's say we've decided that what we're gonna end up doing is having the product that we own that generates the files, uh, save those files to a blob container that has a hot access tier, right? Then we're gonna have two Azure functions. One Azure function is going to process the file, submit it to the external website. And then the second Azure function is going to grab the processed file and move it to a blob container that has an archive access tier because we want to save money, of course. Now, uh, we've figured that out, but what we need to now figure out is what is going to be in the middle of those two functions that are going to allow them to communicate. Typically, this is implemented with a messaging service. And when it comes to messaging services, one of the first questions we should ask is, are we working with messages or are we working with events? And this isn't something specific to Azure. This is specific to or general for all messaging services out there, right? So messages typically contain some kind of raw data and these, this raw data is either gonna be stored or is used to tell the application that's going to consume the message how to consume it or what to do with it, right? And then events are more like lightweight messages and they're usually just used to like signal that something's happened, a state has changed, a status has changed and they don't really care about how they're consumed, right? So in this case, when we think about our function, our first one is going to tell our second one, hey, this file is ready to be moved to archive. This is the name. So we're going to stick with messages here. Now, through our sort of triaging and, and having conversations and, and figuring out what exactly needs to be automated, we've also learned that we don't care about the order of these files. Uh, we just care about them being processed at some point, right? Them being moved to storage archive once they've been processed at one point, at some point, right? This is important because services, messaging services that have these ordered guaranteed features, first in, first out, FIFO, FIFO, tend to be more expensive. So in our case, something like Azure Service Bus, which uh, guarantees order, is probably or overkill for our solution, so we can save some money if we use something like Azure Storage Queues, which guarantees delivery, delivery at least once. Well, 
messing up my words there anyway. So this is the kind of mindset and the kind of questions that you have to learn to ask. Half of that is, you know, understanding the services and half of that is understanding the requirements. And these are things that you just kind of pick up along the way using different projects, using different services and things like that, right? But then you have to multiply that across, not just, you know, which messaging service, which compute service, uh, which storage service, which networking service, all these kinds of things, right? If your customer wants a traditional model and you figure out that using a serverless model not only meets the requirements, but saves them money, you should be also able to advise that recommendation. So this is why cloud architect roles tend to require years of experience. Now, again, following up with what I mentioned that cloud roles aren't really defined. A cloud architect at a large company might be really just tasked with architect tasks, while a cloud developer at a small team might be doing the architecting. A cloud architect at a small team might be also doing the development and the implementation, things like that. Yeah, so it's a very gray area there. Um, but all this to say, Arctic roles tend to require years of experience. Anyway, so now that we understand what a cloud architect does and sort of what you can expect in terms of like things that you should know, how do you go about building this skill set? Well, yes, I think there's maybe three or four things I can probably say here. One is that every single cloud platform out there is going to have an architecture center. Go spend a lot of time in them. I was recently just looking at one right, right before I was working on this video because I wanted to see some architectures that implement uh, container apps. Oftentimes, these architectures will have diagrams, alternatives, considerations, even steps on how to implement the architecture. Go take a look at that. Two is read lots and lots and lots and lots of documentation. For example, in that container uh, service, like 10 options for containers that I mentioned for Azure, you could read documentation of all the 10 container services. There are also like comparison docs, which will say when to use, for example, this one on, on like when to use AKS, Azure Kubernetes service over Azure container instances over container apps. And then you can sort of dial it down and then go read the documentation on that specific service. But hey, if you have downtime, by all means, go and read just random documentation. It's great. Um, the third thing here would be to experiment on your own in terms of like, if you have projects that you've already built and you you know how it works and you know the expected behavior, grab one of the services that you're using there and just swap it out for a different service and see what changes. Is the is it more expensive? Is it least expensive? Is it not as efficient? What Anything that you can sort of figure out and learn from that, learn and document. This is my fourth recommendation here. Write, write a lot because your ability to communicate, ask questions and to express and explain your solutions is going to matter as a solutions architect. And of course, get certified. I'm a big fan of certifications. Uh, Azure has solution architect certifications. So does AWS. Go and take, oh, so does GCP, sorry. I, I don't use GCP much as an example because I don't have any experience with it, um, but it's, it's just as important, right? So go get certified. Um, yeah, that's really all the recommendations I have. Uh, I want to make more videos about cloud roles. So let me know which ones you're looking for. And that's it for this video.